Well, we're going to talk about the building the spirit man. <coughs> so let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your guidance, Lord. And we thank you that your spirit continues to strengthen each one of our spirit so that our body continues to be renewed by your spirit as we learn of the things of the spirit. <coughs> we know your presence is found in the spirit. Your power is in the spirit. So we are glad, O oh God, that we can learn of the things of your spirit and grow in you. Be glorified in our midst and let your name continually be exalted. We thank you. We give you all praise and all glory in Jesus' name. And everyone say, <coughs> Amen. Well, you're talking about the spirit man and, uh, and building the spirit man and all the different elements of the spirit man. We have shown in the Bible, in the Gospel of Luke, that Jesus had a spirit man and a spirit, he was conscious of what was going on in his spirit. And we want to add some more scriptures to that in the, in the Gospel of uh, uh, John. We go back to the Gospel of John to revise where we have left off. In the Gospel of John, <clears throat> we see that when Jesus was uh, with, uh, in front of uh, Lazarus, that he experienced things in the Spirit. And the passage is in John chapter 11. If you have a Bible, turn with me to John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, <coughs> it says here, <coughs> in uh, verse, uh, looking at verse 33, it says, Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, that is, when Mary was weeping, like her sister, the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit. Small s. It is his spirit that was groaning. And we touch about that, that that is uh, uh, embryomai and then uh, also the word tarasso and was troubled, which is the word tarasso. And uh, <clears throat> it continues on in uh, Jesus as he begins to express himself um, <clears throat> even more. And uh, so he has this embryomai experience. Also look over at verse 38. It says here, Then Jesus groaning in himself. So that continues to be part of uh, Jesus' experience as he was sensitive to all the things that were going on in his spirit. Besides that, we have uh, John 13, verse 21. We have also touched on that. There's the word terrasso. John 13, verse 21. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled. Or the word, Greek word is tarasso. Troubled in spirit. And testified and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. So here he is experiencing something in his spirit. Uh, notice it's a small s. It's the spirit within him. He's conscious. And then we might ask ourselves, well... Anybody else beside Jesus experienced sensations in their spirit being? Paul did. We have here in the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 16. Acts 17, verse 16. If you don't mind, we will read the scriptures first before we lay the groundwork for the teaching. Acts 17, verse 16. It says here, now when Paul waited for them, now he ran away from the persecution and he went to various places until he landed in Athens. In Athens, as he was waiting for uh, Silas uh, to come and join him with Timothy, his spirit was stirred up. His spirit was provoked, it says. Uh, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given to idols. So something stirred in him, not his soul, not his emotions, not just his flesh, but his spirit was stirred. 
And that word is the word uh, provoke. And um, the word provoke is from the Greek word uh, uh, poxuno. And um, it's a kind of stirring that he's experience, experiencing. And we touch on the five sensations of the spirit man in our foundational truth uh, teachings on how to be led by the spirit. And uh, so we won't be repeating that one, but uh, some of these things are mentioned in that book because we are going further from that. Uh, but for, for those of you who are hearing this for the first time, it doesn't matter uh, even if you haven't read that one, uh, but just know that this is another sensation of the spirit. Different from groaning, different from trouble uh, in Jesus' life, and here is another new one, a stirring that he's experiencing. Uh, Paul again experienced that in chapter 18, verse 5. And this is a different Greek word. And why do I mention Greek words? It's so that we know that the sensation is different. And the rich language is very Greek, the New Testament Greek. They use a different language to express uh, different things. In Acts chapter 18, looking at verse 5, when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Now here, some of the translators translate that as a small s. And some of the tran other translators put a big s. Because some of them say, this must be the Holy Spirit. Whereas the old Kenyan say, no, this is just his human spirit. And you wonder which is which. And in verse 5, Silas and Timothy, when they came, the Greek word here is suneko, which is like a joining of force. Like something joined the Paul's spirit. And what I believe happened, which I interpret in the foundational truth, is that his spirit experienced a, a joining with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So the translators couldn't differentiate and that's why both translations are accepted. That whether it's a capital S or a small s, that both are stirred together uh, by the Holy Spirit. And usually when you get this type of sensation called the suneko sensation, we're learning all the different types of sensations. Uh, in the foundational truth, we talk about the embryomai sensation, tarasso sensation, hoksuno sensation, and uh, now you have the suneko. And you say, all these sound like Japanese words to you. Uh, and uh, different, different sensations. But this suneko uh, sensation, is an experience like something come over you. So I'm trying to describe it so that it's understandable. And uh, the Greek word uh, suneko is a combination of two words from the word echo, which is to hold or to have, and the word sun, where we get the word synagogue, uh, which in the Greek is actually sunego. Uh, and uh, the word sun is to gather together with. So you don't have and the gather together with is a joining of forces. And that's how I interpret and apply it. Plus, the passage that we have also mentioned in Romans chapter 1. If you have Romans chapter 1, we're looking at uh, verse 9. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. And um, so he says, that he served God with his spirit. And you all remember this is like part three or part four, the message on building in the inner man. We started with showing how the presence of God dwell in our spirit. Remember how we studied the benediction. And how the presence of God and the grace of God is in our spirit. And uh, even the tap on the grace of God and the presence of God, spirit has to contact spirit. Flesh cannot contact spirit. The flesh cannot. And uh, the spirit is a manifest in the flesh for the flesh to touch the spirit. And uh, so only spirit can contact spirit. And uh, the grace of God and the blessings of God are in the spirit. Even Galatians 3 verse 13 and 14, all the blessings of Abraham are actually in the spirit and come through us through the Holy Spirit. It says the promise of Abraham is fulfilled in the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And Ephesians 1 talks about we are all blessed with all manner of spiritual blessings. And so it's important to tap what is going on in our spirit, to be sensitive uh, to what is going on in our spirit. Uh, 
And so here are all the different, different words, and there are many other things like John chapter 4, which says, they will, they will worship me in spirit and in truth. And if I ask people, what's the difference between the two worship? What is the difference between worship in the spirit and worship in truth? Ha ha ha. Hey, isn't both the same? If they're both the same, why not he say it's the same? Why not he say both? Because worship in the spirit involves something deeper than words. Worship in truth, truth always relates to words. He says, uh, thy word, he says to God in his prayer in John chapter 17, is truth. And uh, then it ties back to, to Paul when he says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 15, I will pray in my spirit, I will pray in my understanding. I will sing in my spirit, I will sing in my understanding. And last week, uh, last week, which was a Saturday, we talked about worshipping the Spirit and how the Spirit can be stirred. Well, today, let's go on to the next step. And, uh, and say, say, wow, I've got some more next step. Yes. In over 30 years of ministry, I have not repeated a single sermon. Say, wow, so much to learn. Yes. Which is a lot of tips to buy, by the way. <laughs> Thank God we give it free. Hallelujah. And... Uh, even in the early days, in the 1980s, which was only about 10 odd years of ministry, or 10 or 15 years, uh, somebody came and said, Oh, I want all the sermons. We all look at him. You know what you're talking about, right? He said, well, What sermon? He said, yeah, yeah. Because in, we most, preach, most preachers, when you buy all the sermons, they keep repeating the sermon. He says, Oh, are you sure? Then uh, he said, Okay, before we do it, we let you know the cost. So that was in the 1980s. So we had a tape ministry. We had, we had so, sell so many tapes. In those days, you could, we don't have internet. So people could buy tapes. And it's quite a long process. And so we have three full-time people in, uh, uh, doing the tape ministry. And thousands and thousands of tapes. And so when, uh, it, uh, when we did a calculation, we said, okay, it's 1000 over dollars. say, what? He said, Say, how many are the tapes? Well, these are the boxes. <laughs> okay, now those are in the 1980s, right? And we haven't re repeated since then. <laughs> so, praise God, today you don't have to buy tapes. Hallelujah, and you get everything free online. And, uh, and we will keep on giving it free because I believe in uh, building people up. And uh, if people are blessed, they will bless back. And uh, it's the people who don't have the money that need, need more the training, correct? People who, who are struggling in life, they need the message. And that's why the gospel must be given out free. And so we have here all these different things. This sensation, that sensation. Some of you are not now thinking, What la proxuno, suneko, embrimeomai. And you go, what is called? Tarasso. And then you go, fruit of the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray understanding. He says, confused. <laughs> So the next time you got a sensation, you're wondering. Now you're more paralyzed. You say, I wonder whether this is Suneko. Embryo, Taraso. And you wonder what that is. Alright, so we try to simplify a little bit more. Basically, all the sensations of the spirit can be divided into three categories. Now, let me mention here. In how to be led by the spirit, foundational truth, which is really foundational, and some people, they write foundation, they say, hey, this is not foundation. I say, no, no, that in the Bible is foundation. <laughs> you know? And the foundational truth, there are five sensations. There are more than five sensations. I say, wow, is there. Okay, let me ask this question. How many types of love are there? You might say, four or five according to Greek words. But then within each one, got many divisions. So how do, you, how do you quantify love? Because even family love, for example, you might say you might be a Greek scholar or you might have heard teaching before. You say, well, there is agape love, there is filial love, there is eros love, there is uh, stoge love, and uh, then uh, there, there is suke, which is soul. And then you say, okay, well, all, all these areas, then... But then when you analyze it, stoge love, which is family love, which is not found in the Bible, the Greek word is found more in classical Greek. The love between a father 
and a child is slightly different from the love of a mother and a child. Generally, they're under parental love, they're under family love. And under family love, the love between you know, brothers and sisters might be different from a sister to a sister, a brother to a brother, or an elder sister to a younger sister. See, there are many divisions. So how many types of love are there? Infinity is the correct word. So let me ask a second question. How many types of joy are there? Infinity is the right answer. I've given you clues already. Now your third question. How many types of peace are there? Infinity is the right answer. And uh, how many types of patience are there? <laughs> Some of you don't know the answer because we've just been teaching on patience. There are two Greek words for patience, but under the Greek word for patience, there are many, many levels and differences. Infinity is the answer. See, what? Wow, now so easy, you can pass every objective test, just mark out infinity. <laughs> right. Praise God. At the end of it, there's a trick question. Let's say, you know. You know, how many ways to God is there? You put infinity, fail. <laughs> There's only one way to God. John 14, verse 6. Right? And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, so, we have here that all these sensations of the Spirit, it can be classified into three main categories, which are the categories of your soul. See, so why soul? Because uh, whatever we experience in the Spirit, flows and is detected by our soul. There is a, uh, a mental side, a emotional side, and a volition side. Say, so what is volition? Volition just stands for the will. In the spiritual man by Watchman Nee, he very, uh, very adeptly uh, broke down all the divisions of the soul. He says there's a spirit, there's a soul, and there's a body. And our body has five senses and all the different organs and tissues. Our soul has three divisions. The intellect, the will, and the emotions. And the spirit has its own subdivision. It has the five senses also, which is in five inner senses, which we have touched upon before. And uh, so the spirit has to flow through the soul capacities. And uh, when it flows through the soul capacities, then you've got these three divisions or three different colors. If I ask you, how many colors are there in the world, you would say, uh, they are visible to us. You might say, well, there are seven colors or there are various shades of many colors. Each of the seven colors got many shades. But to create color, all you need is three basic colors primaries. You could create everything else. Now the primary colors of the, the ink is different from the primary colors of the cathode tube or what they, the, the LED lights that mix to produce the colors. And um, when you buy a printer, inside the printer is usually only three colors plus black. Because with three colors, uh, with cyan and magenta and yellow, you can create every other color. And uh, so usually there are just three to create. And so in the same way, there are three main divisions of the soul. And uh, these three main divisions uh, come into the area where we can train our spirit. Train our spirit. Now, how do we train our spiritual senses? When we know they're all divided into three, three main divisions, how do we train our senses in those three areas? Through meditation on the Word. Or just through the word meditate. And uh, when you study the word meditate, the word meditate uh, occurs in the New Testament also. It is uh, in the book of First Timothy chapter 4. First place we want to look at that. When we look at the training process and link it to training our spirit man, let's look first at the book of First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. 
in verse 15 it says Paul writing to Timothy says meditate on these things give yourselves entirely to them that your progress may be evident say meditate on what meditate on this uh, gift and the prophecy that was given to him with the laying on of hands of the eldership he says meditate on these things like that and then give yourself surrender yourself uh, to these things uh, that uh, word meditate uh, speaks about a process of pondering if I were to ask a question what does it mean to meditate how do we meditate most people struggle to describe it and uh, <clears throat> most of you have known that there are many Hebrew words for the word meditate although there's only one Greek word for meditate here uh, and the word for meditate speaks about a process of uh, more of a mental process to a certain extent uh, it is richer in the in the Hebrew language because in the Hebrew language there are many different words for meditate one of the words for meditate which we will classify together afterwards is Psalm chapter 1 verse 2 that says but his delight is in the law of the Lord in his law he meditates day and night that word meditate is the word hega which means to speak to mutter to oneself and most most Christians who have been in Christianity long enough they know the word but your first time here is just a simple word Haga H-A-G-A-H which means to speak to yourself and uh, sometimes you see uh, other religions and non-Christians have their own form of meditation and their meditation might involve saying a uh, word over and over again or, or, or uh, like counting you know different things or using different phrases and uh, so in a sense they might have caught on to Hegata a meditation except they're not using the scriptures they might have used other words sounds or pronunciation so they tap on part of it but the full Bible meaning of meditate involves the word Hega occurs several times in the, in the book of Psalms in Old Testament. The other word meditate that we want to look at is the word siach. And uh, siach meditation is uh, found a lot in Psalms 119. It's also uh, found in some other places. But let's look at Psalms 119 verse 15. And I only give uh, one verse but there, remember there are many many other verses. Psalms 119 it says in verse 15 I will meditate on your precepts and then he add one more word and contemplate your ways it is another aspect of meditation that is given to us meditate your precepts is the word siyach and not the word hega. Hega meditation involves sounds. And you might be speaking the words or saying some things. Sounds are coming out from you. And um, siyach meditation is more of pondering and it's more slightly more silent, which is why immediately he goes into contemplate your ways so there's no sound coming up from you and um, just to see the richness of uh, the Hebrew you also have like Psalms 19 verse 14 Psalms 19 verse 14 it says let the words of my mouth and that's would refer to Hagar meditation and it says the meditation of my heart hey that's different and that's uh, the hebrew word higayon of my heart now the meditation with your mouth is hega the meditation with your heart is higayon you say wow how, how do i higayon meditation and uh, just to throw in one more little word and um, let's see which one to throw in 
swatch. And uh, Genesis 24 verse 63. Genesis 24 verse 63. says here, And Isaac went out to meditate in a field in the evening, and he lifted his eyes and looked, and there some people were coming, and that was uh, his future wife. But he was out in the field, he was swatch. Now what was he doing? I remember they got many words for Hebrew meditation. He was not Higayon, he was not Hega, he was not Siach, he was swatch. So what was he doing in a field? He was not looking for a swatch watch. <laughs> not invented yet. He was swatch. And uh, so now that we have thrown in all the different Greek words for different sensation, at least some of them, we didn't, haven't thrown in all, he said, wow, now on Sunday I go back, eh, more confused. When I first came, I thought, wow, my spirit can sense things, sense things. Now suddenly I say, God, proxuno sensing, taraso sensing, and then you got embryo mind sensing, and then don't know what other sensing, and we were told that it's infinity. <laughs> and then we threw in the different Hebrew words for meditation. You got higayon, Hega, Siach, Swatch, and uh, now I'm not sure what watch H <laughs> anymore. And the whole thing, why we link it is this: all the different meditations of the spirit can be classified into three categories. But to classify into three. We see how they train the spirit. See, meditation, or med to meditate, is actually to train the spirit man. The way meditation is like training your inner being. Meditation is the exercise of your spirit and involves part of your soul. Because your, your soul is the glove which your spirit wears. And your body is the glove which your soul wears. So it's like a double glove that flows through us. And uh, so whatever you do, you could do in three manners. Spirit, soul, or body. So the body can do something by itself without the soul. But the soul, when to do something, needs both the body and the soul. And the spirit to do something needs the spirit, soul, and body. It's a more complex thing. Which is why in some parts that is deeper from within us. And we look at how to exercise the spirit is the word meditate. Meditation is an inner exercise. But here is what we can do. Meditation also can classify into three categories. Say, whoa, that makes it simple, isn't it? And very simple, it is not speech for the body. No, what, what, how do your body meditate? <laughs> no, all meditation flows from the spirit, if it's correctly used. But it is also classified into the three components of your soul. Your intellect, your will, and your emotion. So just as all the different forms of meditation can be classified into spirit, soul, and body. So you say, well, how do you classify the, like the Hagar meditation? Hagar meditation will involve a part of your soul in speaking words, which is your intellect. Uh, Higayon meditation, which involves your heart, have to involve your feeling, your contemplation of your heart. And uh, then there are other disciplines of meditation, like uh, Dhamma meditation, which I haven't introduced that word, that may involve a stillness that comes. And uh, then if there are more than three words for meditation, it's because there are subdivisions of one of those channels. Remember that. There are subdivisions. 
And so the same three classification come to help us to train ourselves in the spirit. This series we are teaching about how to train our spirit so that we can tap upon the strength and the blessing of God. Now again I mentioned, these are things that are beneficial to your daily life. It will, it will actually make your soul richer. And if your soul is rich, another way for rich is the word prosperous. If the soul is prosperous, you will prosper in the natural. And natural prosperity is help and abundance. Abundance is attracted into your life. Third John verse 2. John wrote to the uh, elder and says, I wish above, to the elect lady, above all things that you prosper as your soul prosper. That you naturally prosper as your soul prosper. And another reason as scripture for the benefits of meditation, because many modern people don't see the benefits of meditation. Say, ah, wasting time. Is remember, in this series we thought that if you want to tap upon the blessings of Abraham, where are the blessings of Abraham? Now every Christian who be in church long enough will have heard that the blessings of Abraham make you the head and not the tail. The blessings of Abraham make you well and not sick. The blessings of Abraham cause you to be blessed in the field, blessed in the country. Whatever you do becomes blessed. That means that your jobs, you will prosper. Your business will prosper if you have Abraham's blessing on you. And, uh, and uh, if you're an Olympic runner, wow, no Olympics. <laughs> and an Olympic runner, you will prosper in your career. So what everybody is dependent on your physical strength, and of course, some people cheat steroids, then they get you know, disqualified. <laughs> and, uh, then, and then, most runners will tell you, and most athletes will tell you, it is not just their physical training, it's their mental training. So that sometimes a good player, something happened to their soul, it affects their performance. Look at what happened to Tiger Woods. He went through uh, something, and then he seems to have lost his touch. And even a good player like Roger Federer, sometimes, you know, for two years cannot get a medal or cannot win a, a Grand Slam tournament. But now he's getting his swing back. And those of you who are in sports, you will know that, that there is a flow beyond, beyond the physical. And in the second service, we talk about how when you do something at the Olympic level or the champion level or the genius level, you're not doing it with your conscious mind anymore. You're doing it with your subconscious mind. Remember who was in the second service? We already show you the fastest draw in the West. Quick draw, Mac draw. Not his name. Sorry, that was a cartoon. But the fastest draw, and we show you the YouTube of the guy. And you can go back to Discovery Science Series 2, uh, and we did that message, where he was so fast, and they, they, they put all the, all the instruments to his fingers, you know, the scientists put all these things, and then they also record all the sounds, and then they put two balloons, which is about, I think, six feet apart, and he shot two bullets. <laughs> but everyone heard only one, one sound. He was so fast, and the scientists say, this is beyond normal. And uh, his fingers moved so fast, and it was an old-fashioned gun. Then you got to crop, pull, pull back, and then press the trigger. Not the automatics. Everything is by hand. He did all those three things and shoot two bullets. Everyone heard one sound. Bang! They have to slow down the video to hear two sounds. Man. You don't do it at a conscious level. The same way, if a race driver, they're racing the car, you're going to have your Singapore, what's the next thing? Night, night, night safari, right? No, <laughs> I'm putting your leg. Night Grand Prix, right? Night safari, 
is a different show altogether. You might see the baboon driving something right now. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's uh, okay, the F1. Those drivers are not going to go and say, hey, where's the third gear? Hey, where's the first gear? <laughs> say, oh, you know, by the time he do that, he'll be last of the last of the last. All their training has to be automatic. Why do we put people to training, pilot training, astronaut training, disaster training, and all those things? Why do we keep making people repeat? You know why? So that when you're in trouble, it subconsciously come out. Your training just subconsciously take over. It is your auto-conscious that takes it. That's why we need to meditate. We need to meditate so that the spirit level comes out from us. A higher level. So for many athletes, it is not just a physical training. It is a mental training that is important. And because most people don't know there's a spiritual dimension, there is a spiritual dimension. Anointing of the Holy Spirit. But if the Olympic people find out, we'll also make it illegal. <laughs> Because they cannot naturally pump with steroid and spiritually pump with the anointing of God. But it would be interesting to see what happened if an athlete had 10,000 people praying in tongues for them <laughs> while they're running. No one did the experiment. Who oh, one day we got enough members, we might do that if we had one Olympian. Right? <laughs> of course, then they might say, cheating. Right? Because. Uh, and you know, there's one guy in the Bible who probably beat the Olympic runners. His name was Elijah. You say, how can it be? Read. You go, you go back and read 1 Kings 18. In 1 Kings 18, he called uh, all the, uh, uh, the fire down. Then he prayed for the rain. Three years and six months, the rain stopped. He prayed for the rain to start. Then the young boy went out seven times and his, the, on the seventh night he saw a little cloud. And when the little cloud appeared, his, Elijah got up, he knew the rain is going to come. And then he told Ahab, rain is coming. And then Ahab got on his horse and go, or chariot. And you know how fast that is. But it says, Elijah, the hand of the Lord came on him and, he, and they were both heading the same direction. He went, vroom. he overtook Ahab. So Ahab was going on the chair, which is very fast. Like Ben Hur. And suddenly they come, vroom. and he turned to the next guy. What was that? <laughs> and the general next to him said, Could be a bird. Then he said, Couldn't be that birds don't fly so low. And he continued moving, of course, as they talked. And then they shouted across to his other assistant and said, what, what was that? He says, could be a plane. <laughs> say, no, planes are not invented yet. Come on. Continue. He said, who is that? It's Superman. <laughs> what, Superman? I'm, I don't read the cartoon. So couldn't be. <laughs> Finally, he said, he reached near the gate. It was Elijah. It was Elijah. So he definitely ran the 100 meters more than 9.8 seconds. <laughs> he would have been the fastest man alive. Just shroom. The fastest man alive when he ran the Olympics, but 9.8 seconds. 100 meters in 9.8 seconds. But Elijah probably covered the distance from where he is, Mount Carmel, to the gates of where of just real where he ran to might have been many many kilometers in a few seconds Shoom. wow some of you would love that some of you young people say ah oh, yeah if i get that kind of power <laughs> wonderful the key is you can the sensations the anointing but whether God wants you to do that is a different story. <laughs> but the fact is you can have that energy and the power. Or a businessman who wants to uh, prosper, struggle so hard, open one wonton noodle store, also fail. 
You know, you heard of people bankrupt because of their companies or all those things. They are one time me bankrupt. <laughs> Never heard before. And you wonder, how do I prosper? You'll be working in your heart in a natural, scheming with your mind, going to store to store to taste all the one time noodle to find a secret recipe and produce your own hoping to attract people. Someone you add your Singapore flavor. What secret flavor? Durian. <laughs> Still fail. Because not many people like to eat one time meat flavor with durian. Over creative. <laughs> so what well, everyone says on it, you got durian flavor, one time noodle, mango steam flavor, one time noodle, mango flavor, one time noodle, nobody comes. You probably, you know. <laughs> Uh, over the and you did everything else that you can get import the best everything make your own noodles every morning get up at 3 a.m. everything fail what you need is a dose of spiritual anointing in Galatians chapter 3 verse 14 verse 13 says Jesus died on the cross for us he took all the curse of the law that the blessings of Abraham might come to us but many people never read verse 14 they only know verse 13. Verse 14 says it all comes to the promise of the Spirit. Everything came to one, one channel. The one channel, it can be multiple blessings, infinity of blessings come through the Holy Spirit. Now, if you don't know how to tap upon the Holy Spirit, because only Spirit can tap upon Spirit, then we miss the whole blessing. They are there. And we have other Bible stories that we have shown before that when, when David brought in the ark, nobody wanted the ark because somebody died uh, while trying to help. And in the end, they put the ark temporarily away for three months in the house of Obed-Edom. God started prospering everything that he did. And everything he did prospered. In the natural, it prospered. And I asked Pastor David, you know, what are some of those things that he saw prospering? He says, uh, the fruit trees bear fruit out of season. And uh, the animals produce more little babies, so you got more baby animals. And in his household of servants, even the people were more blessed. They had more children and, and all those things. And uh, if you were obey Enom's neighbor, and you were run right to the fence, and you were looking at his grass. His grass is definitely greener than yours. So the grass is definitely greener in your neighbor's patch. If your neighbor's name is Obed Edom and the Ark of Covenant is with him. So you open a clinic, two clinics side by side. But one has the Ark of Covenant inside. The people who are sick goes. For some reason, the angels are going to decide. <laughs> Haven't you seen sometimes some restaurants? And I know there's one restaurant in, uh, uh, in uh, Parramatta, in Sydney. And it's a Singaporean restaurant with all the Singapore food. And just next to it is some sort of some Asian restaurant or so. Every weeknight, there was lines and no sitting room. If you come late, and you didn't book, you might not have no place. But when you walk over to the next one, two-thirds empty. Next door! And the food, the menu looks not bad too. But of course we know it could be the taste. That could be naturally caused. But besides a natural cause, what happened if, if both got the same formula, both got the same food, both got the same power of cooking, you need the spiritual factor to boost you in. And that is why we have to learn to meditate. When you meditate, you see, these are a few questions that I will just throw out. If you've got no answer for that, then you know you haven't been tapping it. How do you tap upon this spiritual force? Do you just like every day go, oh, and you go out? Some people thought that every morning they put on the armor. Ching, 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 ching. They, they heard you need the whole armor of God. 
So every day they put on a helmet, salvation, breastplate, righteousness, girdle of truth, shoes of the gospel of peace, take out a shield of faith, take out a sword, and say, oh, I'm ready. You know? Or every day they will do some devotion. So because they're rushing sometimes, so in the morning they get up, you know, finish my devotion. Or, you know, and then God help them on that morning when it's Psalm 119. <laughs> The longest chapter in the Bible has hundred over verses. <laughs> but what do they do? They find different ways to do their spiritual thing. Of all the things they do, if you are not able to meditate, you haven't tapped on the spiritual realm. Tapping on the spiritual realm is more understanding that the spiritual realm is already flowing rather than trying to make it flow. That is a whole lot of difference. See, the spiritual realm is already flowing. It says God is blessing. God has blessed. And the rivers of God are flowing from God all the time. Sunlight is always flowing. You just have to put the plant in the sunlight to have the sunlight. That's all we have to do. And just as sunlight is already flowing, so God's blessings is there. And the problem is not that there is not enough spiritual blessing. That people are not tapping upon that. It is just like there could be radio signals and TV signals in the air right now. There's free music in the air. Or free news in the air. And, but you don't have something to convert those signals into something you can watch then as far as you're concerned, it doesn't exist. You can't touch radio waves. You can't touch TV waves. You need either a 3G thing to receive it through 3G and convert it into your uh, little uh, TV, hand TV. Or you need a TV receiver to receive it and convert it into images you can see. Until the conversion is done, you're not drawing it onto you. Of course, you do need an antenna. Everything needs an antenna. Even if it's invisible, you can't see it. The antenna is around your iPhone uh, in a round form. It's engineered as a round thing, hidden. Or curved in a little ball inside. But in the, remember the old phones with the big antenna? <laughs> when it's the size of a brick. <laughs> and then you go and you pick up the phone. And the phone will probably be something like, Hello! <laughs> The first phone that I invented. They said, hey, no signal. Hey, the area. Uh, uh, uh. And so, but they have changed and now the areas are tinier, better materials and more sophisticated. And uh, so, we, when you want to receive whatever thing, you need an antenna. An antenna is like a collector. It collects all the small, small signals and then uh, the more you collect, it amplifies it, stronger signal. And uh, I don't see it here in Singapore because your signals are quite good in Singapore. But uh, let me see. If you drive long ago, I don't know, I haven't gone to the highway. If you drive from uh, Johor Bahru all the way to Kuala Lumpur one time, if you take the smaller roads, sometimes you pass to certain towns long ago. And certain towns, wow, the area must be very tall. Because signal is poor in that area. Especially they don't have a relay system that relays the signal. And uh, in Australia, if you go to an outback place to have a simple radio, you need, wow, what a tall. The house is that tall, the antenna is that tall. From the ground upwards. Because it's a very isolated area and they need a clear signal. They need an antenna. So, in the spiritual realm is there. You already got all the parts. You got all the parts. If I go to your iPhone and somehow remove the aerial or the antenna, your iPhone will stop working. It might get some signals when you're just next to it, but generally, signal is poor. Why? Even some, some places, you go to some places, signals are poor, you cannot get a signal. All the bars dropping under is zero. When it's zero, you cannot even... Everything is working, but no signal. There is nothing wrong with your spirit, man. Your spirit man has all the parts. And it's not manufactured in China. <laughs> manufactured in heaven. 
And God put the spirit there. And you got all the parts necessary to receive the energy. But you need to tune your antenna. And your antenna is not your hand. Mm. <laughs> oh, signal is from here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not your hand. Your antenna is an invisible tuning of your soul and your spirit into meditation. What do we meditate? How do we meditate? If I ask the question, how to meditate? I wonder whether you could give me an answer. How do we meditate? Now, I won't pick any one of you, right? So I don't frighten the front row and they always pick on you. Then people afterwards start going to the back row. <laughs> <laughs> how do we meditate? Just throw out your answer. I won't pick on you. Don't, don't care. How do we meditate? Stay neutral. Stay neutral. Interesting concept. So, but I'm sure some of them in front will not know how to stay neutral, right? Because they're looking for neutral gear, don't have. <laughs> Their car is automatic. <laughs> By staying neutral, do you mean that you... Okay. Okay. Now, can you meditate for 30 seconds? Ah, yes. Okay, now watch him getting the neutral gear. <laughs> you couldn't get the neutral. Too much distraction. Okay. That's as best as you can, eh? Okay. So, do you notice that he got trouble getting the neutral gear? So, what, what, what is neutral gear to him? Neutral gear to you means like free yourself of all the thoughts and... Nice, quiet place. So, that's your neutral. Then from neutral, you went into Hagar because Hagar meditation, you say something. You say tongue, so you speak some words. Okay. Ah, so, you think about the love of God. Okay, so you're getting some of it. So that's how he meditates. Anyone else who has done meditation? Yes? Say anything? Always silent. Uh, so hers is different from his. Do you notice that? Uh, so uh, her, her meditation is very silent, and uh, she sit down and she think about the verses. Okay, if you're alone, you might speak the scriptures. Uh, definitely speaking. So she's also using Hagar meditation. But she used scriptures. But when she's in front of people, she go. So you could be on the next table drinking your coffee. Hey, why is the lady so quiet? <laughs> she's meditating. So that's how you would meditate. Okay, that's interesting. And uh, any other one who does meditation? You receive a thought, a wisdom. So you do it or you meditate? <laughs> yeah. Well, you love this neutrality business. Huh? You must, uh, no. so your name, we give you the name, right? From, from to Patrick to Petra. 
Now you could be Petra Switzerland. <laughs> Neutrality anyway. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now all these are trying to tap upon some inner consciousness inside. Wouldn't it be good if we understand what these people are talking about? Right. There's a way to understand and classify. Okay, remember I say there are three divisions emotions, intellect. See, when he's meditating thing on love, he's trying to do intellect and emotion. And then when our sister talks about uh, the word, she is using her inner intellect to, to focus on the word. So there's an intellect process. And uh, so you see the classifications are coming in. But very few know about meditation with their will. So what? what, what, what how how will we? You will find that a lot in the non-Christian world, where part of, uh, part of their meditation the real part is the, is the will controlling their body. That is why sometimes for them, uh, their meditation, uh, excuse me for illustrating, uh, without trying to make fun of anyone, it's just, a, just to say, you know. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I know, I know the position might be okay. So they might be trying to go. <coughs> 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 Of course, they go. And they sit a long while. And then, lunchtime come, you go out, eat a wonton noodle, plus cha kway tiao. Come back, they're still like that. After five hours, dinner time comes. You go out, eat your dinner, and have a few durians, come out, come back, and they're still like that. Say, so what is that? That is actually an exercise. Besides, they are trying to reach neutrality. They're also trying to control their body. And the stillness of the body is an act of the will. Those who can, and the most powerful among them, I know because sometimes I examine what they do and all those things, are those who could remain in the same position for hours. To do that, some, uh, to do that, you need to be able to control your breathing. You need to be very relaxed. And that stillness that is there. Until your body enters into a state of like natural thing, and you could hold that position for a while. If you haven't, haven't done it before, it can be quite refreshing. Quite refreshing. I know because before you came to know the Lord, you used to do a lot of that. Aha! You used to do a lot of that. Trying to get deeper. But you found when you got deeper, you still need something more. Because there is one third of the meditation to steal the body. So, not that... Uh, and these people should not be made fun of. I mean, some of these people really give their lives to that. And you go to India, you see some Indian holy men might be sitting under the tree for days, rain, shine, and then you might see some uh, Asian monk trying to be still. Is their way of trying to seek out what they term to be more spiritual dimension. And, but the fact is, any good theory must explain everything, correct? It's like science. Spiritual laws is like a science. A truth must explain everything not just in the context of Christianity the understanding of meditation is this that meditation involves your will your emotion or your intellect and most people concentrate on one third at a time or to time they could do it in all three dimensions but what exactly is meditation because that could be just the soul doing it now, even though you got the emotions, the intellect, and the will, there is another layer beyond your intellect, which differentiates between your mind and the mind of the spirit. I give the Bible verse. You see here in the book of uh, Romans, 
the book of Romans chapter 8 in verse uh, 5 and 6 for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh so obviously that is the soul mind sets on the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit and you're setting your mind on the things of the spirit look at verse 6 there is two positions for your mind and only two to be carnally minded is death to be spiritually minded is life and peace there are two settings so there's a setting to the carnal mind the person could be quietly and in fact there's some self-hypnotism teaching going down uh, among the new age group where they're sitting down and they are they are meditating but what's in their mind is they are thinking or visualizing they are getting richer and richer and richer they are visualizing money dropping on them they are visualizing gold coins drop on them so much until you feel right to their neck they can be very silent for one hour and you and you might come around and say what a holy man but you could hear what their thought inside inside was go go precious Precious. <laughs> anyway, sounds like the Lord of the Ring guy. But uh, <laughs> uh, so you don't know, see right. See, there are two settings for the mind. One is a setting on the early thing, but but meditation is something beyond the mind. There's another level of thought. There are two levels of thoughts, which is where let's an analyze again. When our sister was sharing about her trying to meditate, or you mentioned sometimes the thoughts come to you so in meditation your your intellect is set and neutral and you're trying to sense the thoughts that is not yours the thoughts that come from God and it will flow because remember the energy is flowing so there are spiritual thoughts flowing to you and uh, the Bible tells us here in uh, the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says here, in uh, verse uh, 14 uh, to 16, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But don't forget the last phrase. But we have the mind of Christ. In the New Living Translation, which I don't really recommend, but they bring a very good point. They translate it as, but we have the thoughts of Christ. And the thoughts can be powerful. So what you're doing is, you're seeking the mind of God on the matter and letting God speak to you. Which is why starting with the word is good. It helps some. But it's not your mind trying to get the word it's an inner part of your spirit that is drawing on the thoughts that come. Uh, the spiritual mind. So you have a soul mind, you've got a spiritual mind that you're tapping on. Alright, now move to the emotion side. You've got two sets of emotion. You've got a carnal part of your emotions and you've got a spiritual dimension of your emotions. The kind of part of your emotions would be all your feelings and all those things that, that, that affect you. they not necessarily negative. It can be positive also. But you know it's just in the realm of emotions. But there is another higher level which goes beyond emotions and it goes into what you call the spiritual dimension. In the book of um, Galatians chapter 5,
verse 22-23 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And then suddenly it says in verse 24, Those who are Christ have crucified with his passions, the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now what does he mean? He's saying to focus on the emotions that are more tuned to the Spirit level. And he mentions nine of them. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. Now these are what you can focus on. That's what you do when you meditate. Now, on the area of the will, there is a stillness that you're trying to achieve not in your body alone. The body will have a side effect. But the stillness is holding the position of um, holding the position of yielding to God where everything is quiet on your inside. Uh, Psalms 46 verse 10. Psalms 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Now it says be still. The interesting thing is that the word still in the Old Testament involves a spiritual stillness that involves a quietness and a peace. So in the book of in the New Testament scripture, Philippians chapter four. Look at Philippians chapter four. Verse 7 and 8, scripture that most of you would know. And the peace of God which passes understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. It is not a thought. It is a sensation of peace that guards your heart and mind. So there's a stillness. Your, your, your body is still because the deep peace is in you. There's an inner quietness. And, uh, and, and that is there. Now, this is what you do when you meditate. You can be in any position. So, when you're in any position, you could start, since there are three divisions, remember there are multiples of three. You could start, how you start is, is up to you. You could start with a sensing of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is what you're trying to sense. You could start by sensing and trying to get in touch with your inner self, your inner self that feels this love. But not just the soul level love, there's a soul level love. You want to sense the spiritual level love. Or you could be focusing on a thought, you start with the word. Or you start with a good thought. And then, whatever words, that if you focus on that, you're trying to tap upon the mind of God which is deeper than your thoughts. Not just your own thinking. You might start with your own thinking. So you focus your thinking on God's word. But your thinking is not enough. You're not trying to think and think. Meditation is not trying to think and think. You are like starting your mind in the process of the right area of thought to open yourself and tune yourself so that God's thoughts can begin to flow to you. And then in terms of your body, in terms of the stillness, some of you, when you, uh, especially men, when, when you're highly stressed, do you notice that if you go up to exercise and sweat and walk, or have a good game of, of, of uh, tennis or what, and then you come back, you feel different? Because your body has released all the energy and there's a stillness that comes. And uh, which operates upon your soul too. It works both ways. And that stillness helps you a little bit. Now let me give some Bible example. Where some people, and some of you may say, Wow, very easy. Uh. If you will just get into the meditation in whatever dimension and then it becomes full in you. 
you automatically have the spirit flowing. Remember, the spirit is already flowing. It's when you meditate, going through whichever direction, that you tap on the spirit flowing into you. Remember, spirit flowing is automatic. And uh, if we could get into a position to receive. It is not having a blank mind. It's having, which I like the word you use, a neutral mind. Uh, where you tap on the deeper parts of your being. And so to make it easier for you, uh, in more simple terms, in your emotional side, you tap on love. And all the beauty of love. And love can lead to joy, peace and everything. On the intellect side, you tap on something positive. Some positive words. And sometimes the words might not have a scripture in words at the ending, but the meaning is the same. But it's a positive word that comes to you like, you are God's beloved. I'm the beloved of God. I'm in heavenly places. It's all positive. Or I'm a child of God, which is in, and you don't have the scripture, but a positive thought. And you hold on to the positive thought and let the positive thought take you deeper. On the stillness area, all you're doing is allowing your natural breathing process, which is why some people, they meditate through their breathing. They concentrate in their breathing. And on that side, I always encourage people, my, uh, the way to do it in a Christian way is to concentrate on a song or a sound because when you have a song or sound of course I assume that your song or sound is not <coughs> inside you cannot make a song or beautiful sound that is there it could be the, the sound of waves not just your heartbeat or your breathing it could be the sound of waves that's why waves are very soothing or it could be the sound of stream flowing Certain frequencies of birds are quite uh, soothing. Some people, they hear the morning birds. But I have heard some sisters say, Oh, every day the birds... Kan, 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 kan. <laughs> so, maybe those are Singaporean birds, not enough food, not enough trees and plants. But, uh, so, concern itself. So, I make it very easy for you. Intellect, positive words or thoughts. Emotion, love, and everything that flows. On the stillness of the will, meditate on vibrations or sounds. Music, natural sounds, your breathing is a vibration. That's why some of the non-Christians tap on that. Say, so what happens if you succeed? You get into a position where your antenna actually is tuned. It's tuned into that dimension. Let me give a few examples of people who thought they have it but don't have it. In case some of you walk out and say, Yeah, I got it! I got it! I got it! Okay, fine. Acts chapter 8. This is a Christian who is born again. His name is Simon. He didn't really have a very good uh, life uh, before he became a uh, worshipper of Jesus or follower of Jesus. He was actually a sorcerer in verse 9. He practiced witchcraft and uh, then he was someone who looked for power all the time. He wanted to be more and more powerful. Perhaps that's why he, wanted, he became a sorcerer. In the end, in verse 12 and 13, he got born again. He believed and he was even baptized in water in verse 13. And then he continued with Philip. And he was amazed to see the signs and wonders that God does. Like for example, this morning when we came in, okay? And we were worshipping and all that. When the moment I started greeting everyone, the gifts of the Spirit started operating. And for me, it operated with visions and sensations and all those things. So I tapped into the Spirit. So when I tapped into the Spirit, some of you have started tapping, you could get some sensation. But I tapped in a bit more and then the vision comes. So when the vision comes, 
I saw, for me, the vision is like a pair. I see everything that I needed to do, and I flow with that vision. And um, so then I, of course, knew that uh, although other people can be healed, for example, the leg pain, and uh, I know that it was a lady, and uh, that it was on the fifth row, and I know that what I'm supposed to do, because it's stepping upon the spirit. But my spirit has to be quiet to hear it, to receive the vision. I cannot be seeing the vision while watching television. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, uh, uh, you might be watching, you might be watching something, but because you're in a meditative mode, not really watching, then it's possible. And you're watching something, and the vision comes in between, and then God blocks you. <laughs> And say, hey, get out of the way. I'm watching Batman. <laughs> no, because, uh, because you happen to be a meditative person. And then that can happen. But generally, for most people, cannot. Because their concentration is not that good. Uh, not that quiet on the inside. Now, here's a man who got all kinds of things coming from the inside. And the worst part is he didn't even know. So one day Peter comes and baptizes people in the spirit and says, Wow, I want this power. And he, he didn't even know it was wrong to use money. Because that was his habit. He said, I'll give you money, teach me and give me this one. And then Peter says in verse 20, 21, Your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God should be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. First, his heart was not right and he didn't know it. His method was wrong and he didn't know it. And uh, verse 22, he needed to repent of his wickedness and pray if perhaps the thought of his heart will be forgiven. Notice in verse 22, there was a thought going on in his heart. Then verse 23, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Now, if a person is poisoned, you will know it. He is poisoned and bound and he didn't know it but if Simon or Simeon could have meditated if Simon were here today and he learned these principles and he went back home and he tried to meditate he would begin to feel ooh, ooh, ooh. why poison or a poison person feels the thing he began to feel lousy and he said hey, why am I feeling lousy I'm supposed to feel better because there was something inside that need to be touched first before God can pour things in. And he is bound. He got a thought going on in his heart. So there are other signals going on. And if he tried to meditate, it seemed to get worse. But it's not. And here is the good news. Say, what? Is that one good news? No, not that one. That one was the bad news. <laughs> Here's the good news. Whether you realize it or not, you're already meditating. You see, while he was meditating, Simeon was meditating on the negative things. Can you see that? Whenever he's quiet, what does he think about? Power, power, more power, more power. And he might even sing the same song, but his meaning is different. Mm -hmm more power to myself something like that so he's 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 already what you see meditation is not something you actually have to learn see wow don't have to learn no it is your natural setup meditating in the right thing is what we need to learn meditating on the wrong thing is what we must unlearn And the good news, remember I promise, good news, <laughs> this is the gospel, good news is that you all have the ability to meditate. Now you can relate. Whatever you're feeling deepest right now, you are already subconsciously meditating. If it was negative, okay, remember I say the three spokes. Intellect, emotions, and will. Correct. Okay. Intellect is 
if you're not trying to think of anything, when you're not thinking, what do you think? <laughs> I say, what question you ask? Apa <laughs> ini? Ini sermon ka? <laughs> right. Okay. When you're not thinking, what do you think? It's impossible to stop thinking, correct? Every one of you, I mean, it's impossible to stop thinking. You don't want to think also, you think about not thinking. Okay. When you're not thinking, what do you think about? That is what you're meditating on right now. And all the time, in the spoke of your intellect. Now, if it is like Simon, he be thinking of power, power, power. When he's not thinking, he's thinking. So, when he asked Peter for that power, was it subconscious or conscious? Subconscious, eh? Hey, here's money. He never even, you know, bat um, uh, 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 an eye to think about, hey, is this right or wrong? It just comes out to him. Because whatever you are, you are. It is the product of your meditation. Your meditation is already making you behave in subconscious way. So the good news is that you're already meditators. <laughs> I'm helping you to recognize where you're actually meditating wrongly and tune it to the right thing. Now, it might be a struggle at first. It might be a struggle, like something that got stuck. And then, you know, like nobody walks like that. <laughs> right. Nobody, but through training you can. Your whole life you walk like that. Right? Even babies don't walk like that. Naturally we walk like that. Opposite arm, correct. Opposite. The opposite arm for opposite leg. But by habit, if you have done it for 20 years, it feels very awkward to walk normal. Because your whole life you always walk like that. Perhaps you were born in the culture or country and your whole family walk like that. And the whole country people also walk like that. And you try to walk the normal way, you feel very uncomfortable, so you're forced until you become very normal. So it's to untrain you. Alright? Most people, as children, they breathe correctly. Their voice could carry. They will say, No! They will breathe from their diaphragm. And when you're, when you're lying down, you will breathe from your diaphragm. But most of us, after some trauma, anxiety, we are breathing from the chest. <laughs> and without knowing subconsciously, we are breathing from the chest, which is an incorrect way of breathing. And most people who breathe from the chest are nervous people. And but the subconscious, you don't realize, like, just now, uh, uh, Linus' habit is. <laughs> because, you know why sometimes your leg shakes by itself, involuntary? Maybe because it feels good. <laughs> but because there's nervous tension. Something inside me, energy needs to be released. Now for him, maybe, the stillness meditation might be good. Where he go? <laughs> of course, in our Sunday meeting, no time to practice all night prayer. All night prayer, you test whether you can stand in one spot for at least. Of course, don't go too far. Don't say two hours. After you, after you, no, 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 no. one hour later, I hear boom. <laughs> Maybe no. After that, need to call Dr. Joshua, you know, someone got injured. <laughs> but, but the ability to steal your body so that your body is very relaxed all the time is an hour of my day. See, there, there are some things going on on our inside. Some of us could have a thought that has, quote unquote, not demon, eh, just thought, possess you. And it's the, it is the default thought. You know, if all of you bought computers, 
and you don't change your default screen, all your default screen look the same. But some of you are creative, change this, change that, change that. And some of them, for me, I change once maybe a year or two years. Someone every day change. <laughs> you know, not or whatever. But your default thought that floats out from you. What are you thinking where you're not trying to think? That's what you already meditate. And if not something good, you need to train it. It might take some time to train it. It might feel uncomfortable. But it takes time to train. Take your hands out for a moment. Put your hands together. Okay, look at your hands. Some of you put your right thumb over your left thumb. Some of you put your left thumb over your right thumb. Correct? It's your natural thing. Now, do your hands the other way. Feels very uncomfortable, right? That's because you're used to one way. The same way when you got up this morning, I assume you all brush your teeth this morning. <laughs> Without thinking, you brush one side first. I normally start on the left. Right? And normally you I use my right hand. Try using your left hand and see. Hey, I'm taking very long. <laughs> because it's subconscious. Or you're using a mouse, always use your right hand. Try using the left mouse and see. If you uncover, but now I train myself because I'm right-handed. I train my left side, so I always use my mouth on the left side. I now I feel uncomfortable on the right. You will get used to it. But the key is, meditation changes your default, your default thought. Don't say when you leave this place you can't meditate. It is that you can, you already are. You just have to be quiet enough to identify. Where your thoughts are floating. That's what he mean by neutral. Neutral means you're not pulling here, pulling there. Because every time you read the paper, your thoughts are pulled towards the paper. When you go out uh, on the MRT, your thoughts might be pulled to the advertising all around. And then when someone talks to you, your thoughts are pulled to what the person is saying. Then you go to class, your thoughts are pulled on all directions. Then when you set neutral, nothing is pulling you. You're not trying to think. It floats into your default. Correct. But sometimes, some, some because they're all over the place, so they lost their neutral gear. <laughs> so, you need to find the neutral. And this is the other thing. On the feeling side, whatever you are feeling when you're not trying to feel, that's where you're meditating on your emotional side. So some of you might be very melancholic. When you're not trying to do anything, you're thinking, Oh, the good old days. How I long for it again. This is your default mode. You are meditating on feelings of the past. You are meditating on moments that you have lost. You meditate long enough, you will have a lost feeling. Even though you're no more the lost ship, you're the found ship, but your feelings are still like the lost ship. Nobody loves me. I know he came and carried me. I'm the, I'm the ship number 100. The 99 were inside, I'm number 100. Why got chopped here? The one that escaped and he carried you back. But he could physically put you in a pen and you still look at him and still try to go out. Because you still feel lost. In the midst of all the 99, he said, Oh, he loved the other 99 better than me. See, now I'm so conscious. He has to go and carry me back. So all this, you are meditating on the feelings. You have to change those feelings to hold on to moments of love, moments of happiness in your life, and create it that it is still true today. And moments of God's acceptance in your life. Or how much God loves you now, not yesterday, not in the future. Now He loves you. Or you could be in a good fellowship with someone or Christian, and you know the Christians really enjoy your fellowship. You say, praise God, I really feel nice. I feel love, and I really love these brothers and sisters in the Lord. Or you've got your own family, your loved ones, and you, and you meditate on the love that you have. And that, that enriches you. And... Um, of course, the, the, the vibration side, which is the wheel. Whenever you are not 
making any sounds or any tune or any song, where what is the default sound or or music or song that comes to you? In other words, what's your national anthem? Say, well, I didn't know I got national anthem. Ho ho. Say, for us, we are trying to make our national anthem. I found an oasis of love. I remember the first time we tried to sing it, you all got the song, the tune, but don't have the spirit yet. But now when you sing, got spirit. Because last time, you're, you're, the song was new to you all. You, you don't know where the country feel, folk feel, you know, or what say, I found an oasis. <laughs> but now you're singing the real country feel. I found an oasis of... It's the, uh, uh, the, the spirit is different. The, the tune is different. Same song. And so, every one of us could have a national anthem playing inside and you didn't know it. You say, wow, you want to hear your national anthem? Hear the songs that you like. If all your songs are blue, you're probably blue. <laughs> all your songs are noisy, you got noise inside. It resonates. And if all your songs are like, the lost love songs. You are really lost love in your vibration. And if you meditate long enough, whatever love you have also lost. <laughs> and you keep at that, you, you might be successful in your self-prophecy, self-fulfilling song, you die unloved. <laughs> and uh, not only that, some of these things kill us off. The default, wrong default might produce sickness and disease or psychosomatic things and we kill ourselves early. Or some of the uh, emotion things are so traumatized and it builds on and on until it might produce sickness, disease in our life and uh, make us friendless when we could be friendly and uh, worsen your situation. And some people don't live long, even worse. The, the areas of the wrong song they begin to produce all the wrong things in you. So we simplify again. We have sensations of the spirit man. We have many, many ones. And then we have uh, uh, different ways of meditate. And both are classified in the three main categories. In the intellect side, the higher intellect side, in the emotional side, the higher emotional, and the real area vibrations, and it's a higher realm. So when you are tuned correctly, then new thoughts come to you from God. New sense of love come to you. Sense of peace and joy. Jesus said, my joy I give to you. My peace I give to you. And new songs come to you. Ephesians 5 verse 18 19. Melodies come to you. And like... Like you mentioned today, when you're walking, you got a song come to you or a phrase that a happy, happy tune that you're clothed with the garment of praise. Or some of you might wake up in the morning when you're really in tune and your spirit is in tune. In the morning, you might wake up with a song. How many of you woken up with a song? A familiar song of, or tune. If you're a musician, it could be even a new song. So some of you woke up with a song and a song is going in you. That means in that area, you're tuned correctly. And any morning that you got up with a song that say, Monday blues are here again, then you know uh, the last night you didn't meditate. So we have to keep exercising our spiritual muscles in meditation, in these three dimensions, in order to tap into the spiritual sensations. See, as you are tuned correctly, then God can put in His sensations into you. And you begin to feel the dimension of the Spirit. You have to set to neutral for God to pour into you. Like Simeon, he was just all out of tune. He can't receive anything. So praise God. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your grace, your mercy. Continue, Lord, to teach us your grace, teach us your power, Lord, that we... No, Lord, the fullness of your grace in our lives. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. And we ask, Lord, that even right now, you take the tunes in our heart, you take the tunes of our spirit, and you cause us, Lord, to be tuned to them so that we will know the goodness of your spirit, the favor that you have upon each one of our lives, 
that a new song will arise from us, O God, that we can move higher and higher in the things and in the dimension of God. Bless each one, O God, and cause us to sing songs of your Spirit, to know you, O Lord, and all the fullness of your grace upon our lives, that we will worship you all the days of our life. For that, Lord, and the tuning of the Spirit, we thank you for your glory and all your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all rise together. This is an old familiar song. But I uh, hope that uh, it starts down, but it should lift us up. When I am down and oh my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart burden be, then I am still. the silence until you come and say a war with me you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Troubles come and my heart burden be. Then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come. And sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand a mountain.
can be. Father, you will now raise our spirits up, Lord. For you said that they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. So seal this work in our life, Lord. In these last days of the church, we have forgotten how to meditate. Meditation is not taught even though it's in your Bible. Teach again your people to meditate so that they find supernatural strength for their daily life. Supernatural infusion. Because every day that we live, we need a lot of energy. Energy to do the things of this life. And the eternal, unquenching energy is from your spirit. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give you Jesus a good clap offering. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you, and we'll see you again.